<coughs> hey everyone, how's it going? Um, I would like to take a few minutes of your time today to explain um, my recent dietary change and um, becoming a veggie and um, <coughs> just the, the some of the benefits and stuff like that that I've experienced and some of my kind of issues with um, you know animals and stuff like that the way they're treated and just the reasons why I think this this is a good lifestyle um, change for me and um, this is not um, to make you feel bad about eating meat and stuff like that and, and not to um, you know try to say you're wrong or you shame to yourself and stuff or something like that I'm not about that at all um, you should eat what you want to eat and it's not my business to wait for what you eat um, but I would like to kind of get you in the direction of you know a thinking about the way that you can benefit um, animals, yourself, and the environment just by not eating meat. You know, a simple dietary change like that can do so much good for the world. Um, and let me start off by explaining some reasons, more detailed information about um, each of the reasons. Now, the first reason is the animals, of course. This is the more kind of obvious, more common thing that comes up with, veg with people um, who are veggie. Um, people do this for a moral reason. There are lots of moralists that would agree with me on this. Um, we believe that animals don't have to suffer and die just so we can have, you know, eat, have a meal to eat them. And uh, we, we think it's not fair for animals to be separated from their families and be killed so people can eat. That's a very, it's a, I think it's a very bad thing that that occurs. Um, and you know it's just there's just no reason for it. I mean, why why kill animals and um, have them suffer like that when there's just no need for it um, and it separates from them from their family and then all that wasted grain stuff like that they have to take and all this you know whatever it takes to get them going or to keep all this stuff going. Um, the second part is the environment, the CO2. Um, you know when we when animals are slaughtered and, and whatnot and packaged up um, and sent off to the, <coughs> the grocery stores, it, it takes a lot of CO2 emissions that come out from the trucks and whatnot to get to the environment. It, 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 it's really, it's not a good thing. You know, it's bad enough as it is with our world the way it is with global warming and stuff like that and you know, you, you may not believe global warming exists but I can assure you that it, there's definitely some hard scientific evidence that exists and you know um, you know you may not say oh it's just a half a degree as well you know it doesn't take that much there's not really a whole lot it takes um, for this um, to make a big change and the changes have been happening much more steadily as the population has increased and um, more and more people are using fossil fuels um, and of course as I kind of got Early on, the first point is um, people who, um, who who raise cattle and stuff like that. To, you know, they, they have to get a big area to um, to get to, to raise the cattle, mm -hmm. which means cutting down trees and you know getting the land ready and growing grass and all this other stuff. You know, like that. And that takes you know many acres of land to raise cattle so they can move around and and you know be fed. Of course, they have to use all the grain. They have, they have these lots of grain stuff like that. Like I guess corn or whatever it is they used to feed the cows to um, so they can you know be healthy and stuff like that and um, <clears throat> and also once the cows are slaughtered did you know that it takes only a couple of hundred gallons of water to make um, grains and vegetables like rice and corn one pound of corn for instance only takes 168 gallons per pound did you know that it takes 12,000 gallons of water to make a one pound of meat? That's that's a lot more. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot more gallons of water per pound than you know what it takes to make you know soybeans, which is only 240 gallons of water. And plus, you know, it doesn't take nearly as much land and waste all that grain to um, you know raise the um, the grain stuff like that 
and then we can use all that extra grain we have we, we don't have to feed the cows because we aren't killing them for no you know for no reason at all so people can eat their you know precious meat um, to feed all the starving kids in America yes it may seem like it's kind of hard to believe when the obesity rates are as high as they've been um, in children these days that we have obesity or we have starving children and that's you know it's people are still starving and a lot of them don't have access to um, good vegetables and good healthy nutrition food that's good for them um, but uh, you know it's, it's um, <coughs> and it's now often eat you know meat and stuff like that which is you know, it's just not a, I don't think it's, it's not a good thing. <clears throat> um, and they could be helped and benefited by having more food because they wouldn't have to spend all the grain that it takes to feed the animals so they could slaughter them and fatten them up to, um, you know, to feed the, to the, star, the starving kids in America. Um, and then, of course, I think the most important part, well, not the most important, but what, another, another important aspect of this is the, your personal health. There's no better way to, than to better yourself and to make a, a change for the better. Um, you know, past the environment, past um, the animal, the animal moral issues and the animal rights and stuff like that. Make a change for yourself. Um, you know, you could simply by giving up 10% of meat, you can. Um, <clears throat> Assuming they get back in on 10% of meat, you can, you know, help the environment and um, help help the animals. But also, you can, as once again, help feed more people, and also help yourself in the way you can lower your weight, um, and <coughs> also um, make it lower your risk of can many cancers, um, high blood pressure, diabetes, um, stuff like that. You know. If you have genetic issues and and cancers within your family and stuff like that, or obesity, you know, this is a good way to help reduce that risk, you know, and help kind of fight back the diseases that often come with meat. You know, mad cow disease is just is one of them. And yes, it's definitely a real thing. It exists, um, and it's it's definitely not, not a good thing. Um, <clears throat> And, you know, just those little things I mentioned today would is really would really help you as a person. I'm not saying you have to do this. I'm saying that would be that would really be good to look into it and to think about it. You know, think about where your food comes from and think about how you can help um, everyone around you and also help yourself at the same time. <clears throat> and then, um, you know, many celebrities like Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr. Um, Brad Pitt, Gandhi, and Albert Einstein were all very famous vegetarians who lived a very productive life and helped change, you know, Gandhi and Albert Einstein helped change the world, you know. Gandhi with his protest marching, um, and then Albert Einstein with his famous scientific equal with MG square. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, lastly, I would like to um, thank many YouTubers that I watch every, in my everyday life. Um, Including Nucion, who has a channel called Nucion Speaks that does, you know, small little rants like I'm doing right now about what he believes is the right thing, what he believes is right. And, and he's got a big section on vegetarianism. He has himself has, you know, helped me a lot in deciding if this is right for me or whatnot. And, and you know, he put up a good, good argument about, and you know, humans don't need meat. It's not required for our diet. It's never been required, no matter what. No matter what farmers and people who work in these big organizations want you to believe, and also, um, <clears throat> excuse me once again, and also, it's just not needed for. There's just no point of it. You know, it's senseless killing. Animals have to die for me to eat meat. You know, like he said. So there's just no need for it. You know, and I'd say he's right. <clears throat> and then. Um, Charles Trippy, who does a um, channel on here, you may have seen it, Internet Cold Television, you know, CTFXC, CTFXC for the win, <clears throat> of course, got to give a big shout out to them. I watch their, sh their vlog every day, and I noticed that a couple, little while ago, he became a vegetarian too, and um, I thought, man, that seems like something I'd want to try, you know, so I tried it out, and, you know, I've liked it, and I think that, you know, 
we share some of the same beliefs and stuff like that with the animals. Most people are. And um, also, I'd like to help, uh, thank Dan Man McDonald. Can you dig it, baby? <laughs> Another guy. He's a raw veganist and he does um, spiritual speaks and lectures and stuff like that. And I've watched him for quite a while now, maybe about a year or so, and he's been very helpful in this, um, this um, journey. And um, also, I'd like to help, uh, thank Dan Man McDonald. Can you dig it, baby? <laughs> Another guy. He's a raw veganist and he does um, spiritual speaks and lectures and stuff like that. And I've watched him for quite a while now, maybe about a year or so, and he's been very helpful in this, um, this um, journey of mine. <coughs> Thanks for watching.